Good morning. How are we doing today? My name is James Sweeney, aka Split Suit. Welcome back to another video. And today I want to go through a question sent in by Terry. And Terry wants me to review a specific question from the Prefop and Math Workbook. So without further ado, let's jump into the EV of multi street bluffing, show you how to do this exact question, and how to think about solving these kind of things from a mathematical point of view. All right, so this is question eight on page 155. It's all about barreling. So you bet 50 into a $50 pot on the turn. You expect them to fold 40% of the time to your turn bet, and the times that they do call, you think they're going to fold 60% of the time when you bet 100 into 150 on the river. So what is the EV of this plan overall? And obviously the assumption is essentially you're bluffing here. If you fire the turn and they raise, you're just going to fold, so you're just still losing that $50 turn bet. So what is the EV of this play overall? So if you're anything like me, it might help to look at this visually so you can kind of understand what's going on here. So let's look at a spot like this. The big blind decides to check the turn, and here we are. And if we think about what could happen here, there are kind of three branches, three realistic things that could happen based upon this simplified example. Because right, we're not looking at our exact whole cards, thinking about the exact equity or implied odds, or reverse implied odds, or anything like that. Just a simplified spot to get our head wrapped around multi-street EV. So if you think about what can happen here based upon the premise of the question, we could fire the turn and our opponent could fold right this moment. We pick up a $50 pot uncontested. Cool. Or our opponent could call. And then if they do call and then go to the river, we think they're going to fold against a $100 bet some chunk of the time. So there are kind of three different things that could happen here. Our opponent could, going back to the turn, they could fold right this moment. If they don't fold then, they could fold right this moment, right? Or they could call, continue, beat you, is kind of the overall assumption of the question, and then you lose the $100 turn bet as well. So let's kind of run this through, talk about what numbers we're putting in each of these slots and explain how to do this. And also one of the things that you can use as well to save a tremendous amount of time is my EV calculator. This is the complex EV one. It's totally free. I'll leave a link for that in the description box. You can get this and a bunch of other spreadsheets as well. Very helpful for off table exploration as well as doing the workbook and just studying your own hands overall. And let's kind of talk about what numbers need to go in here. And then of course, how to use the calculator as well. All right. So let's start rocking and rolling with this equation. And don't worry if it looks a little bit scary at first glance. If you're kind of new to this kind of math, I'll leave a link in the description box for the advanced EV equation. It's an expansion of the basic EV equation since there are multiple branches to contend with, more than just the basic two. So in this situation, let's talk about what goes into each of these slots. So the first one is they essentially are going to fold against your turn bet. So the immediate outright folds you're getting right that moment, which in this case is going to happen 40% of the time based upon, right, you expect them to fold 40% of the time to your turn bet. And how much are we winning when that actually happens? Well, if we go back to the replayer, just pop right in. If we bet this 50 into a $50 pot and they fold right this moment, well, we are winning $50, right? We're winning that pot right that moment. So that is what's going to get factored in there. So 50 bucks, boop, boop, boop. perfect. So when they continue, right, they're going to fold 40% of the time, which means they're going to continue 60% of the time. So both of these numbers are going to be 0.6 because they're looking at the times that the villain does continue and then what happens during those branches. So let's do the first one first. This is going to be the positive branch. So the times that our opponent calls the turn bet and then folds to our river bet. So what how often is that happening and how much are we making the times that that happens? Well, they think we think we're they are going to fold 60% of the time when you bet 100 into 150 on the river. So 0.6 is going to be this number right here. And how much are we making the times that that happens? Well, if we look at the spot right here, the bet of 50 gets called in a turn and on the river, we think we're going to bet 100 and they're going to fold. So how much are we making in that situation? Well, if we actually back up to the turn, we get our answer. So the pot's 50 bucks, so we're fighting for that right this moment. And when our opponent continues, we're getting their $50, right? Our $50 bet at this point doesn't get factored into the win side of the equation because we can't win our own money at that point. We can only win what's in the middle and also our opponent's call. So when we fire the turn and river and our opponent folds here, we are making an extra $100. So let's pop that in right here. Ba, ba, ba. Perfect. And then the times that our opponent is going to continue against that river bet is the inverse of this, right? They're folding 60%, which means they're continuing 40%. So 0.4 goes right there. And how much are we losing when that's the case? So again, going back to the turn, 
when we are looking at our total risk for this play, we're looking at our $50 turn bet and our opponent calls, and then also our $100 risk on the river, which means that we are risking $150 total in this exact spot. So we can pull up the complex EV calculator and just start plugging in all of the numbers. So we think they're going to fold immediately on the turn 40% of the time. And the pot right that moment was $50. And when we win, that's happening, what, 40% of the time? I'm sorry. 60% of the time, they're going to fold against that river bet, and that's $100 in our pocket, so $100 in the win, and that's happening 60% of the time, and we think that when we end up firing both the turn and river and lose, that is going to be a $100, $150 loss, sorry, $150. Perfect. And the numbers in white automatically calculated for us. We only have to fill in the ones that are in blue since it's a simplified version of the complex EV equation, if that makes sense. So overall, what are we getting? We're getting an EV of plus 20 bucks, which is pretty great. And how much are we risking for that? Well, we're risking our $50 turn bet and another 100 on the river. So 150 total and an EV of plus 20. And if we were to check the answer key in this spot, we'll find that that is exactly right. So these are the exact inputs for solving question eight on page 155 of the prefop and math workbook. Now, if you're extra studious, you may want to go a step further here and say, okay, well, what is the true takeaway? Well, the true takeaway is to start looking at the immediate math of a specific example, right? So in this example, based upon the exact play that we've outlined, what is the EV? That's all well and good. But it's also helpful to sit here for a moment and say, okay, well, what if some numbers change slightly, right? That way you can get some extra extra reps out of a single rep. So one of the biggest takeaways here is looking at what happens when you change, say, a single variable and hold the rest of them constant. So one of the big things that I like to look at is, okay, what is the impact of getting more immediate folds? So what if instead of my opponent folding just 40% of the time against that turn bet, they were actually going to fold 70% of the time, which is very, very high in someone who's folding a pretty good chunk but against some of your players, that might be the case, or in a specific spot, maybe they fold quite a bit, so it might be helpful. So let's just say that our opponent, instead of folding 40% of the time against the turn bet, is actually going to fold 70% of the time. Notice that we actually get a pretty big bump, not quite a double in our EV, but pretty darn close to it, which is pretty impressive considering we're just changing a single variable, not changing any bet sizing, not changing any impact on the river. We're just changing the immediate folds against the turn bet, the turn bet, which is only $50 into a $50 pot. So if this number were much smaller, let's just say they only folded 25% of the time, then all of a sudden you notice what can happen in the inverse. And of course you can change these things quite a bit, right? You can say, okay, well, what if it was a different bet size on the river? What if it was a different uh, folding frequency on the river? You can look at all these things and just start messing around and playing around. And this is one of the helpful things when you're doing this kind of exercise off table is just take a moment and mess with a couple of different inputs and see what the impact is. The more you do that kind of stuff, the more you're going to start seeing the patterns like the impact of outright folds versus the impact of maybe less folds right now, but a lot of folds later. So maybe you thought your opponent was only going to fold 10% of the time right at this moment, but against the river bet, they're actually going to fold a ton of the time, right? Uh, maybe they're going to fold 90% of the time. Now what happens? And all of a sudden you can start seeing some really, really nice patterns. If you just spend five minutes, three minutes, honestly, a couple minutes here can go a long way towards identifying these patterns much, much faster. And again, this is a little bit simplified because we're not looking at implied odds. We're not looking at our exact cards and exactly what the impact of that is on blockers or equity or implied odds or any of that kind of stuff. But this at least gets us a nice starting point for doing some really good immediate exploration, a little bit of tangential exploration. And this can help a tremendous amount in real time when just trying to estimate the EV of various plays that you're thinking about running. And if you're interested in doing more exploration like this, more work, not just on EV math, but lots of other kinds of math and prefop examples too. Make sure to check out my prefop and math workbook today at splitsuit.com slash prefop. It'll take you right over there. There are over 1,500 questions, cash game, and MTT examples, as well as a complete answer key, and you can get all of that today, as well as the paperback on Amazon if you're interested in a physical version of this workbook. As always, if you have any comments or questions, please do not hesitate to let me know. Just leave a comment down below, and of course, a like if you learned anything from this video would be massively appreciated. If you need anything, let me know. Otherwise, I'll see you back shortly with a brand new video. And in the meantime, good luck out there and happy grinding.
So in this situation, let's start with the top one. So the top one is how often they're going to immediately fold. And that's that 40% of the time. So 0.4 multiplied by how much you win that times the, that was not uh, not good English, not at all. <laughs> 